Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. I'm back from the race to world first and now it's time for an update on the Mythic Plus meta for the War Within Season 1. I want to talk about the data from Archon, which is pulling in like all the real data for what people have done for dungeons. At the moment it's got data for 7s and above. I also want to talk about my old M Plus tier list, which happened before like Paladin nerfs, before the disc buffs, before a few of those different things went into play how that's shaping up and what my new tier list is and how it's going to be a little bit different than this one, okay? So starting it off, if you guys don't know what Archon is, it's from the Warcraft Log site. They have a nice section for it where you can basically see here's where everything stands at the moment. It's basically the new sub-creation and basically looking at everything, seven and above, what people are running for talents, trinkets, consumables, the works. It's great. And so I also wanted to talk about where we really stand for M+, because people kind of look at these lists and instantly assume this is like what the best thing is going on and honestly I feel like the season just hasn't really started yet because the averages that it's pulling here if you check it out it's what 26 16 divided by eight dungeons is about 327 points per dungeon which is the equivalent of like tens and elevens I think it's like a, a, a well-chested 10 or something like that that they're putting like these averages in together and so, like, on average, yeah, everybody's doing their 10s and 11s. Makes sense. The real issue, I would say, with this is that the season hasn't really started yet because some of the most geared players are, like, 625 and our highest eye level 639. And at the moment, 12s feel like this massive wall to overcome. And so I feel like we're at a point right now where the season's just really getting going and this list could kind of change a lot. So I wanted to see where I think it's going to change. And also where I think that these are fairly or maybe not fairly rated for what's coming. So Shaman, again, I think this is the most fairly rated. No surprise onto this one. It's kind of to be expected that the spec is blasting. And in a lot of cases, from what I'm even seeing in like pug groups, is that people will discriminate towards Shaman or they'll, you know, discriminate against other specs and try to get a Shaman because they have the expectation of just more crowd control, better crowd control, better tools to get you out of problems than a lot of the other healers and it's almost like a repeat of like vengeance demon hunter all over again where people are expecting this spec this role to kind of carry the brunt of a lot of the crowd control a lot of the other things that are needed in a dungeon environment so that other people can just kind of like afk and blast that's been one of the biggest things i've noticed when pugging on my alts lately I've been playing my shaman and paladin quite a bit when I've had free time during Race to World first casting, and it's been very, very noticeable. So, no surprise to see it in the S rank going into it. Not shocked at all. Disc Priest, there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about with the spec. First and foremost, yeah, it got way better once they actually buffed the spec. Holy crap, it got way better. Like, it was in help tier, basically, for my list before, like, the buffs came in. And there's that, and I also wanted to talk about, people were asking me about, like, a bug with Disc Priest, and so I wanted to address that. Notably, when Disc has your pet, you also gain Shadow Covenant, which increases your shadow damage. And so when you play Shadow Fiend, that buff is 35%. When you play Mindbender, it's 20-25%. And when you spec into Void Wraith, which is from the Void Weaver hero talent, it gives a special buff in one way or another to your various pets. So your three minute Shadow Fiend becomes a two minute Shadow Fiend, but it still keeps its increased cooldown reduction. Your one minute Mindbender stays a one minute, but it gains Shadow Fiend levels of Shadow Covenant strength. So basically, talenting into a one minute Mindbender gives you the same Shadow Covenant as the two minute Shadow Fiend Void Wraith. And so a lot of people were calling this a bug. I'm assuming it just works that way because I reported it like multiple different times in beta because I thought it was a bug at first and it's just stayed that way the entire time. So I assume until Blizzard fixes those things or changes them that Mind Better just gets a way better benefit out of talenting into Void Wraith than Shadow Fiend does. So yippee! <laughs> and that's really good in dungeons too as it's especially noticeable with the 100% bonus healing or the 100% more atonement healing that you do in dungeons compared to rates. So, awesome. Love that. The nice thing about it is that the spec just blasts huge damage and huge healing all together, all at once. And there's are there are definitely areas where there's like downtime where you don't have your pet. But honestly, just like good preemptive use out of Rapture, even if you are unsure if damage is going to happen, or just like dropping barrier in anticipation that damage might happen to kind of tide you over until you get your Mind Blast for your Rift back, or you get your Squid back, is often like more than enough. And so the spec feels really good thus far in the incoming season. 
What also feels good is chesting keys and getting those sweet, sweet achievements. And our sponsor for this video also agrees. And that's why Boot.dev has built an excellent platform to teach you from start to finish the programming languages in Python and Go, getting you writing a ton of code and gamifying the computer science behind it to make sure that you can both track your progress and some sweet achievements on their site to mark your progression. While the platform is self-paced, you also are never alone in the process. They have Boots, their powerful bear wizard that is always trained on each of the lessons to be able to walk you through the steps and not just hand you the answers, but to help you understand the reasoning behind them. They also have a great, vibrant Discord community to help you meet other people who with those similar goals and to get some additional help along the way. They so heavily believe in their platform and how it can teach you Python and Go from the very beginning with no experience required that they also offer a 30 day, no questions asked money back guarantee. And they also are offering free demos of each of the courses and those interactive features. So you can give it a try before you commit. So if you're interested in learning some new skills and having a great time along the way, be sure to click the link in the description box down below and use my code AUTOMATICJACK to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the description you choose. Huge thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. Well, a couple days have passed and tuning notes have come in for Prez for nerfing Flame Shaper Evoker. I don't think that Preservation is a B-tier healer on these lists, or at least I don't think it's going to be in in the long term. We're kind of at an interesting point in the season right now before everyone's really scraping their way into 12s where we're not quite at this point where stamina has gotten so weak relative to the damage. And what I mean by that is there's a number of areas where you can still survive incoming hits for like the unavoidable damage in raid boss fights, even if your healing is not like perfect. And so when the damage spikes and the damage bursts really continue, Preservation Evoker with the Chrono Warden setup is insanely, insanely good for kind of like reversing all of that incoming damage. It's also no surprise that there's a lot of Preservation Evokers that have been getting geared up for raiding and really like focusing on raiding. And there's a lot of moments where there's sort of like this general feeling in the community where like, oh, they might nerf 12s or eventually we're going to be able to outgear our waves from like the 11 to like the 12 key mark. And I think that might also be another reason for it, where preservation is going to start going higher up onto these tier lists as time is actually going to end up going by. I would even argue that it's going to be exceeding the level of disc in the not too distant future because of the additional mob control that it brings to the table. I've already heard some rumblings about AUG potentially falling off later on down the line. It feels very strong right now when we're at this point of like not really needing max DPS to sort of get through dungeons that sort of like get to the end of the dungeon without too many deaths and avoiding the like 15 second timer of Challenger's Burden. But I've heard some rumblings about AUG potentially not being the best selection for like a god comp type setup, but people really loving like Frost DK and mages and everything at the moment. Even if you were running an AUG, I still think that the burst healing of a Prez can make it an excellent choice. And while I don't think it's going to out pace Resto Shaman, I would not be surprised to see it going up higher on the ranks just because of the crazy toolkit, the crazy output that they bring, and how the nerfs coming in for Flame Shaper are really not going to affect the spec at all in an M plus environment. Paladin right now has been bouncing all over the place, and this is the third round of recording this video. So, we first initially had Paladin at a solid spot, then there was an announcement of 6% aura nerfs coming in alongside some Lightsmith buffs, and so we talked about how that's going to hurt the spec, and now that aura nerf has been reverted, and there is a bug fix for Dawnlight, which was affecting really only Raid Paladin right now causing it to do a bit more healing than intended, but then they buffed Dawnlight because they're fine with the healing that had mostly been going on with Dawnlight, which just results in a Mythic Plus buff. So while Paladin now has buffs into Herald of the Sun, I think a lot of the conversation about like Lightsmith taking over or something along those lines is should very much be put to rest. I still very much believe that the Herald of the Sun hero talent is going to continue to be the path, and we're getting stronger actually because of the dawn lights it's going to feel much more noticeable particularly for spot healing which has been a big problem for holy paladin i think relative to their usual strength you know in the race to world first holy paladin was kind of eclipsed as the spot healer in favor of like holy priest for example 
and the overall output, Devo Aura, things like that weren't really making up for it. And it feels still pretty noticeable. And I think even with the Dawn Light buff coming in, which will do some good to improve some of your healing over time, especially on prio targets, I don't feel like our spot healing is in a tremendously good position thus far in the incoming season. And then that ties directly into our burst healing through Beacon of Virtue. Notably, we've been using Virtue very heavily in this incoming season, both for Saved by the Light and getting the extra absorbs onto your allies, but also just the direct healing that's coming from Virtue right now. Feels like it's a lot weaker at handling a lot of the burst AoE damage compared to even Shaman, Prez, Disc Priest, even Monk at times. And that's been one of the biggest issues, I think, for the spec in this season already has been when you have your cooldowns up, when Wings is up, or you have... For example, the Rising Sunlight extra Holy Shocks coming after the fact of using Wings or Divine Toll, they feel all right, but not nearly as like powerful as they did at different times in beta. And it feels like there's some other healers that are also able to handle a lot of that burst damage better, kind of forcing you to be very preemptive with a lot of your resources. By setting up Virtue in advance, you can trigger the shields earlier thanks to, I think it's called Glimmering Radiance, the passive talent beneath it. By being really good with your Devotion Aura usage or your Aura Mastery usage to mitigate incoming damage or bubbling a certain mechanic and sacking somebody else to sort of reduce the overall party damage is really insanely important. And I think it's even more so important because you can't just muscle heal your way through every problem like some of the other healers at a very high key level. Through proper planning and execution, you can absolutely get some very high results with it right now, but it basically kind of feels like it's a bit harder of a version to play than some of the other healers that are what I would consider at the same level of like, you can pug slash group and network your way to like the 0.1% title with this sort of healer where you may not have as consistent of a team or something. I do very much think the Paladin, now that the nerf has been reverted, is more comfortably in a position to continue on having a high level players or high quantity of players pushing for that 0.1%. And I think that this nerf reversion kind of just saves it from like falling off of the abyss. I think it's at a like balanced enough level where it can perform well at the high key levels. It's just going to be much more challenging, I think, than some of the peers that they have around it. Of course, their abysmally low healer damage is not helping them either, but I think that this season is not having much emphasis on healer damage whatsoever. I think that the challenger's peril for the 15 seconds onto a death timer is insane, and I think a lot of people would be happy just having better utility or crowd control or damage reduction or something like that to keep other players alive than worrying too much about healer damage. It's still always going to be of note for people though. I can say for myself, I had spent a bunch of time this past week gearing my Holy Pally, and then I was about to drop it basically when the nerfs were coming in, and now we're back on track with it, and I'm very excited to continue gaming with it. Damage or no, a little bit harder to play or no, I'm still very excited about the gameplay and the playstyle, and I think that anybody who's been enjoying the gameplay and playstyle, stick to your guns. Holy Paladin's gonna be feeling quite good. Mistweaver specifically is enormously tanky, like really short cooldown defensives, really good healing cooldowns on hand, like Celestial Conduit, their hero talent, for example, is very, very powerful. GG is still good. You also still have Shailun, still very good. You know, Revival's not as insane, but it's still very, very useful, especially in dungeons with lots of poison dispels. And so the spec just always has good output when you really need it. And so I would honestly not be too terribly surprised to see it start moving up in the ranks. The things that I think are pretty accurately rated right now, yeah, I'd definitely say like Holy Priest and Druid are both pretty fair for what we're seeing on the charts right now. As I've been like getting all my 10s and 11s and stuff done as Holy Priest, I've really noticed those areas where you're like dry on AoE healing because you're basically just relying on like piety overheal transfers or like the increased healing that you can get there to kind of get the job done. And it doesn't feel great when you are lacking in that environment. And so it's been very, very noticeable, like lacking that burst AOE, which is prevalent in like almost every single dungeon. The lack of kick, stun, stops, things like that is also really noticeable, both with disc and with holy. But 
disc can just kind of burst through the regular damage so well. Like, we were even not popping spikes, for example, on Edna, and I was just waiting until I had my Mindbender and my Squid, for example. We just popped all six of them at once or something like that when he did his, like, regular ground pound AoE, and you just muscle heal through all of that. Holy Priest, for example, would kind of struggle more in that environment unless everybody had tons of DRs where you can actually have the time to single target everybody along the way. Druid got back-to-back -back buffs throughout the beginning of the season, and I think it's really just highlighting a design problem with the spec at the moment, where, yeah, regrowth is king, but while Holy Priest can spam, like, flash heals and heals to their heart's content, Druid has to set up their hots to enable regrowth to do good healing. And it feels like you have to just spend a lot of time, effort, work to do healing and do good healing where the other healers don't have to expend nearly as much like work or nearly as much effort to sort of get the job done. And I think that's really the problem where like Druid has, where it seems like they're having some talent changes coming in with the anniversary event. We don't know how many those are going to be because I suspect that there's going to be more. I hope that there's going to be more. And I think Druid's probably the like prime candidate for some more like revamping as we're getting ourselves closer to that like 1105 patch that's incoming. I think it's just really noticeable and I would not be surprised to see like Holy Priest and our Druid kind of stay in like that same position. Notably, they are showing like their healing and DPS and it seems like on average, I think Druid actually does have good damage, but if it takes a lot of activity time, to actually set up that damage, or it takes a lot of activity time to set up your healing, then you're not getting the opportunities to really to blast all of that damage. I think Rest of Shaman's kind of in a similar boat, where I felt like I could do really good damage if I played Farseer and like set everything up perfectly, but it's a lot of activity time to properly do it, whereas like Disc is just seamlessly producing it. So here is our old tier list that I had for my video right as the expansion basically was dropping. And at this point, we've had three or four different um, tuning notes that have changed all of this. So we're just gonna drag everything down to the bottom here and we're going to start fresh and let you guys know where I stand on everything, okay? Notably, we're leaving Resto Shaman up here and I don't think anybody needs to be surprised. The kicks, stops, stuns, and also just incredibly easy floor for playing the spec has made it really the mainstay of M plus right now. I think that the representation at like higher key levels is like, well, depending on how high you go, it's sometimes 90 plus percent. But I think it's like over tens is like 40 or 50 percent shamans at this point. And I can tell you from experience yesterday, I was getting declined in favor of shamans quite a lot on most of my characters. So yeah, no surprise to see them up top. I do think Preservation is going to be rising through the ranks, and I think it's going to be at a similar level, even if there's lower quantity of players, and it's going to be at a similar level as Shaman, at that excellent tier, that elite tier, that healer that people are always going to be wanting to bring to the table. The burst output feels fantastic, the high damage feels great, the great preservation nerf came in, and it targets Flame Shaper and Raid and everything along those lines, so I think... Preservation is looking strong, and I'm not at a point where I'm like fearing a next round of nerfs or anything like that for the spec, which is great to be able to see. Next up, this one gets kind of gets me in between, between having like a low excellent and like a high good, but basically disc does absurd amounts of damage and has incredible amounts of burst output with the caveat that you have to plan it out a little bit more. You have to think about you know, when you're going to send on your squid, when you're going to execute it. But the feeling of being able to blast through massive absorbs on like the coagulum fight in City of Threads, or being able to blast through any burst damage that gets thrown at you on like Edna, the first vault, boss in Stone Vault, where we're popping all of the spikes at the, at the very end and just muscle healing through it because I saved all my resources. Those things feel great. And... While it can be a little bit more challenging to play, especially in pug groups because you're not having a kick and really not much crowd control to provide to the team, I think in really well-organized groups, it could be at that excellent tier. Although, again, you're relying on a team to be more willing, more active, just stronger in general with using their shutdowns to stop mobs from casting onto you. I think at the very least, Disc, especially after all the buffs that they've received and how quickly we're able to accelerate into higher haste setups, I think the spec is in a tremendous position for a key environment and is feeling very, very fun to play. Next up, I would say is eh, it's going to be kind of tight onto this one. 
After Paladin had the nerf reverted, I think it's very fair to keep it at this good tier. And the improvement, I think, in particular for some of their Dawnlight healing over time effect is going to be really nice to be able to see how much impact it's really going to have. I think Dawnlight's like 7 to 9% of my healing most of the time in dungeons. And so a 30% buff isn't going to be like overwhelming. But I think it can also make you more meticulous and more thoughtful about how you're placing those dawn lights and hopefully be able to actually feel more of the real impact on how it can you know basically save your allies get you set up more easily to deal with a lot of the heavy burst damage going out you already get very rewarded for a lot of your proactive moves of setting up devo or in advance setting up virtue in advance with full or near full holy power to keep on dumping your spenders in to keep your allies healthy and so I'm very, very glad <laughs> that the nerf was reverted onto this one, and I'm very much looking forward to playing my Paladin some more, because even though the damage is kind of low, I think how the spec plays in general, how it builds up its resources, feels great to play, and I think this good tier doesn't quite do everything justice, because it's also a reflection of, like, how easily do I think that you're going to have a time of, like, pushing up for the 0.1% title, or, like, pugging and like successfully healing through high keys like this there's a bit more planning that goes into it to not get kind of caught out in areas where you feel like you don't have a resource or don't have a button to press but i think the spec is going to do great next up i would say monk is absolutely deserved into this good tier even though they might and again my prediction who knows they might be some of the lowest representation for like title holders or for some of like the higher keys I think there's a lot of times where like monks have done really well on like a season by season basis, but historically they just don't have as much representation. The last expansion, we had a lot of monk representation when they were the flavor of the month. Now a lot of those players, of course, have migrated to shaman. So I think that monk really didn't lose anything going into the new expansion. In fact, gaining conduit of the celestials and a lot of their tier set bonuses as talent options are really really great ups for the spec their damage is like respectable unfortunately their mystic touch doesn't give you a lot of value if we're going into heavy caster comps which seems like we're having lots of just magic wielders i mean death knights are doing huge damage these days as an example not getting the most benefit out of something along the lines of mystic touch but the kicks, stuns, rop, all these things are going to be fantastic. We'll see how the upcoming patch is going to change some things around for the spec as we get some more time to test it out. Personally, I kind of feel like we have more changes in that 1105 anniversary patch coming, but we'll see. Either way, Mistweaver can both stop enemies from casting onto you, shutting them down to avoid future damage, and when damage does happen, Shaylun's Gift, Conjure the Celestials, your chi -G. I mean, even Revival's respectable as well. You have a lot of different tools to get out of your problems. And when we see the Devour affix, you'll also see how valuable Revival can be in that situation as well. So lots of good things in Miss Weaver's kit. For Resto Druid, well, this is their third buff in about five weeks or so, giving them an extra 16 or 17% additional healing. And... I really think about the times where I was playing the spec back in beta where there were moments where like, yeah, more healing would help me muscle heal through this moment or that moment. But I feel like the biggest thing is that the gameplay has been just like a really hard drag. Having so much power into regrowth and so little power into the rest of your hots that it feels like there's just a lot of GCD intensive work and almost like a slog to actually set up your healing properly before you can actually push up health pools with any speed. I think the utility side has always been a major strength for Druid, and I don't think that this is going to like stop them from getting the M plus title or anything along those lines. But I think a lot of players are really just going to get turned off by the gameplay, and when they see I can just press totems and kick randomly and I will succeed, there's a lot of times I think more players, especially hardcore players as well, and very well coordinated groups to take advantage of all that utility. I think a lot of people are just going to be doing from the resto route to the resto route over here. No surprise on that one. I am very surprised that there's not more incoming changes for Druid, and I know the class tree, for example, is always a hot topic as well for the spec. Kind of surprised that there hasn't been anything going on there, but I think so far the gameplay for Druid has been such a turnoff. Yeah, it's great bringing Mark, and they have a ton of other mob control that they can bring to the table. I just don't think there's going to be too many players who are going to be going after Druid when there's a lot of other options out there that feel easier to play or more consistent and are also bringing a lot of utility, a lot of value in other ways. 
And bringing up the rear, we've got Holy Priest. And this one feels pretty bad as well, since I really enjoyed messing around with various builds, especially in beta and all the time I'd spent in it. And I was really hoping that Piety and the Overheal redirect was actually going to get like more value. I was hoping it was going to feel like this super powerful burst output. And it's felt solid and it's felt pretty good. But I think a lot of the spec is still kind of pushed into this position from Shadowlands, where you're kind of healing one or two targets at a time. And the season that we're in has just burst damage, like everybody taking damage constantly at the exact same time. And you need to blast huge amounts of healing to get through it. Not to mention the insane amount of kicks, stuns, interrupts required, how they've changed the dungeon pool themselves to also require direct interrupts in order to put a mob's ability on cooldown. So even if you fear a volley cast, well, once they break out of that fear, they're just going to recast it again and you need something that really, you know, the spec just doesn't have access to. There's been a lot of Mindsu skips that feel very good in the dungeons themselves. There's a decent amount of humanoids, but the lack of poison to spell, curse to spell... And, of course, all the mob control, I think, just kind of adds on to the problems that the spec has and can honestly, like, make it more of a drag. I'd really like to see a rebalance going into the spec's power, just kind of in general, where it feels like they don't have good ways to, like, balance around Raid and Mythic Plus in terms of the healing that they have, because the spec feels just entirely built on single target healing and the very like flavor text of holy priest is about being this versatile healer well it feels like you're kind of just like boxed into a corner in a lot of areas that being said for the dungeons that do have really high spot healing requirements you could sustain healing for ages really it's just that it feels that especially at a higher key level there are these moments where you need to put together huge amounts of burst healing and your options in order to get that are more and more limited and are making you require or lean on to your teammates for when they're using defensives or when they're going to stop the mobs for you when you can't in order to kind of get through a lot of these challenges. So this is where my personal list is right now for healers in Mythic Plus after all the different tuning notes and how things are really going to be shaping around. Of course, these are where I kind of think the season is going to be going or is going to be going very soon. The Archon list changes basically every day. I've, this last bit is recorded a little bit later on and like the Archon list has already been like shifting and adjusting and moving around a little bit more. So I think long term, this is where a lot of the specs are going to be going at least until the next round of tuning notes that we may have access to. Of course, no surprise, the Resto Shaman bringing both really easy access to like get into playing it, insane amounts of mob control, just excellent burst healing, it's got the works. Preservation has insane amount of tools to get out of problems and kind of muscle heal through a lot of them. The utility they bring is fantastic, their healing, their damage numbers are all very high, they just have great output, and I think they're extremely well suited to the big variety of like burst damage that we have in the dungeons. Disc notably is the king of burst damage and burst healing, and it does very well if you are setting it up properly, like proactive use of Rapture, holding on to squid, you know, three to five seconds longer to make sure you have it for that perfect moment when there's crazy amounts of burst damage. There's some challenges to when you want to time the spec, but I think it's also getting pretty easy to get into playing. And I think that the damage and healing feels fantastic for the dungeons getting thrown at it. While I would say Paladin feels good, it doesn't feel as like bursty or as like crazy powerful in some areas as you might have with some of the other healers on this list. It does have some excellent utility tools for a dungeon environment, which are absolutely crucial for teams. And the amount of like one shots, burst damage, insane AOE. There's a lot of things that Paladin has on hand to deal with it with Devo, Bubble, Sack, bopping targets if there's any physical damage, which are a bit more limited in this season. There's a ton of tools they have on hand, and I think that finally, now that we know that they're not getting nerfed, I'm much more comfortable continuing to play it on the side as one of my alts. Miss Weaver, I think, is again going to be that dark horse for the incoming season. Their ability with their very short and powerful cooldowns to sort of muscle heal through a lot of problems is fantastic. I think Fist Weaving feels really good in the expansion. The streamlining for the expansion has gone great. And so you may not see a huge quantity of them. Hopefully I'm wrong. But I think that they're very deserving as to like one of the high level like title healers. Our Druid, I think a lot of the gameplay is kind of dragging it down at the moment. Mark the Wild is always going to be good utility, good use for the group. There's tons of mob control the Druid brings to the table. I think there's a lot of specs that are easier to play and can burst higher output when they need to, when they get into bad situations. And Resto Druid just doesn't feel like it's one of those at the moment. 
And for Holy Priest, it's back into a very heavy single target gameplay, which isn't any surprise, but in a season with lots of burst damage going out, there's a number of areas where the spec can just kind of struggle, and planning how you're going to be utilizing your Oracle buffs, for example, is absolutely crucial. It does feel like the spec has really, really low output from like all of its AoE abilities, even Sanctify in Dungeons feels pretty weak, and I'd really like to see some kind of rebalance to help the spec actually deal with burst damage rather than trying to like pick at players one at a time to deal with everybody taking huge damage all together all at once so we'll see what happens under that one hopefully some more 1105 tuning notes coming into it and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video if you did be sure to like and subscribe and if you're interested in supporting further huge thank you to our patrons who make all of this content possible if you'd like to know more about it and the rewards we offer check it out in the description down below but that's it for me thank you so much for watching guys i hope you all enjoyed it i'll catch you all next time